Open up your book to page 13. We are going to listen to chapter 3 read aloud, and then you are going to complete your five fab summary. Most folks keep food in a root cellar. Not Squint and Leech. There's a stack of old beaver pelts that stinks to high heaven, and when he failed to get his price, he swore he'd let him rot, and did. Three wooden cases of empty mason jars now home to a world of bugs and a five-gallon keg of cider that's gone to vinegar. There's some broken furniture that might have come from my mother's place, but I can't be sure because Squint never lets us see it. And a pasteboard valise with, busted, with a busted handle. That's, that's it, unless you count rocks and dirt, which he has in abundance. Just in case he ever gets hungry and wants to chaw on chalk or sh shale or granite. Food preys upon my thoughts because the last thing I ate was the hunk of stale bread that was supposed to go to the hogs and started this whole mess. It's all my fault, no question about it. If I hadn't stolen the hog slops, Harold wouldn't have gotten took, uh, took for the army, and it would have still be the two of us against Gwent like always. I give anything to have him back, because the notion of being on my own scares me worse than spiders. All the bad things that have happened in this world, losing our parents and getting put up with Squint and such, Harold was always there saying things will get right for us one day, and I've always believed him. Let's back up, um, back to this paragraph about how it's all my fault. And I want you to describe how Homer feels and put that in the who section. How does Homer feel and why does he feel this way? Press pause to write down your answer in the who section and then play to get started. Then go down to this top paragraph on page 14. What does Homer want? What does he want right now as he's in the root cellar? Yeah, we know he wants food, but what else? What's that bigger issue that has to do with how he's feeling? Silently write down what he wants in the wants what section. Press pause if you need to and then play to get started. I'm going to pick up reading on he's not gone. And we are looking for a problem. He's not been gone an hour, but I'm missing something awful. Plus, I know what happens in the war. The newspaper prints a list each week of local men lost in battle or from sickness. Never says how they pass. Exactly just a few words like met his maker at Malvern Hill or expired of his wounds. And mostly they don't come home but are buried where they die. Harold is so true and brave and fearless that he's bound to get himself killed. Worry sick about what will happen to Harold, I lie in the corner feeling sorry for myself and for my big brother and for everything that's made me sad. Thinking on the dead and moaning ghosts and such and wishing I had something to eat so I could forget about being hungry and concentrate on better reasons to be more miserable. Okay, go back and read, read this paragraph. Um, what problem is Homer facing right now? It has to do with his feelings and what he's afraid of. Silently write down your answer and then press play when you're ready to keep reading. Then it dawns on me the ghosts aren't ghosts at all, but voices coming from above, Squint and Cornelius with them, bragging about what they've done. I hear them through the floorboards, clear as clay. Courtney's going on and on about how clever Squint is and the money they both made selling Harold to the army. Lovely piece of theater, Squint, says Courtney. How much did the judge take for his part in your little play? Thirty dollars? Maybe you mean thirty pieces of silver, eh? Took his share like he always does, says Squint. Can't be helped. Let's see, two dollar jug for Sergeant Harris and twenty for me for standing witness. 
That was the price agreed, says Squint, real stubborn. Which will leave you with a profit of two hundred dollars, near as I reckon. Only that wealthy pal of Martin's pays to keep his precious son out of the war, out of the army. It'll take me months to collect one, Squint. Till then, I'm out of pocket. But you will collect a ventral with him, sis. Not a bad turn of profit for a $50 investment. He's my kin, says Squint, so I get the lion's share. That's only fair. Corny laughs and thumps his jug on the floor. Sorry, I lost my place. Here we go. Oh, Squint, you're a devil. Lucky for you, the boy is so innocent. He'll be under fire before he realizes he wasn't sworn legal and that the draft ain't even gone into legal effect yet. That was mighty smart, saying he was 20. He could be 20, Squint whines. Look at the size of him, and besides, that boys younger than him have volunteered. Younger boys have lied about their true age and enlisted. Why shouldn't he? What they were saying makes me mad enough to spit, if my throat wasn't so dry. Heard the men at the dry goods store talking about the new conscription law. According to the law, a rich man can hire a poor one to be his substitute and die in his place if need be. Pause for a moment. What does Homer find out? What important piece of information does he find out about Harold and what Squint did? Silently write it in the then column. And then press Press pause to write down and play to read the last part. That's what Squint done with Harold. Sold him like a slave for $250, even though he's white and supposed to be free. Even though the draft ain't even happened yet. Not legal, according to Corny. So the oath Harold took don't count because it came from a lie. Soon as I heard that, I, I know what needs doing. I have to run away from Pine Swamp, Maine, and squint and leech in his wretched farm and find my brother and save him from the war before it's too late. Silently write down um, what Homer is going to do now that he finds this information in the so column. After you finish writing, complete the shrinking sticky note sheet for chapter 3.